Imagine you are a photographer. You need a camera and lens. One is probably not enough. You need wide lens, normal range and telephoto. Maybe a macro too. It's too dark, you need lights. It's too bright and it filters. Gimbal, tripod, camera bag, extra batteries, the list go on and on and on. But we, as 3D artists, we have this wonderful camera in our software with no extra cost and most of us don't even know how to use it. What a shame. In today's video, we'll talk about the camera basics. We'll divide this topic into parts. In this one, we'll talk about the exposure triangle. In photography, the exposure triangle is simply the relationship between the aperture, shutter speed and ISO. These three components work together and you cannot use one without changing others. If you adjust one element, Another element must change to keep the same exposure of your image. But you can use them to do so much more than just control the brightness of your photo or video. Let me explain it one by one. Shutter speed is simply the time that the camera's shutter is open, allowing the light to hit the sensor to make an exposure. The higher number means that the shutter will open and close faster. For example, the value 250 means that the shutter will open for 1 2 50th of a second. This will give you a sharper image with less motion blur, but less light will come to the sensor and the image will be darker. On the other hand, lower values will give you slower shutter, which allows uh, more light to go through the lens. In this case, the image will be brighter, but you need to be careful about motion blur. Motion blur is not always a bad thing. You just need to know how to make it work for you. Photography of waterfalls are a great example. The flowing water looks much better with a motion blur. The image was shot with shutter speed of 3 seconds. It means that this photo was taken for 3 seconds. 1, 2, 3. This would be impossible to do without the tripod, but we, as 3D artists, don't have to worry about this. Aperture is an opening through which light travels inside the lens. F number controls how large this opening is. The smaller the value, the wider the opening is. It also means that more light is coming through the lens and the image gets brighter. The double field is the byproduct of the aperture. Wider apertures produce a shallow double field. Notice how much more isolated from the background I am right now. On the other hand, narrower apertures results in a greater double field, letting more details in the image to be in focus. But the image gets darker because less light is coming through the lens. Each lens has its own aperture range. Lenses with a wider aperture are more expensive. But again, we as 3D artists don't have to worry about this. ISO refers to the sensitivity of the camera sensor. A higher value means there is more sensitivity, while low ISO means that the camera sensor becomes less sensitive to light. If you set up the ISO to high, you might get a very bright image with a lot of visible dots. A noisy image, if you will. But again, as 3D artists, we don't have to worry about this. So basically, you set up your aperture and shutter speed as you want, and then you set the ISO to balance exposure. A noisy photograph is better than blur one. Plus, you can use software to denoise your photo. To explain it more clearly for you, I invite my friends to help me out. As you can see, we have a moving subject in the foreground 
and the mountains in the background. Let's analyze our situation here. Notice that with the current value of shutter speed we have a motion blur on our subject. We achieve a bit of depth of field with the F number we are using, so the mountains are blurred a little. We also have a small ISO value, so we don't have noise on our image. Let's say we want to have a sharp subject without motion blur. To do so, we have to increase the shutter speed value. As you can see, our image gets darker, so we have to adjust other options to keep the same exposure. We can increase ISO value, which will give us a noisy image, or we can open aperture wider, which will give us a blurry background. Ok, but you can ask me now, what to do if I don't want to have depth of field and my goal is to have everything in focus? No problem! In order to get this, we need to have a narrow aperture. Let's increase the F number value. But as you can see, it's making our image look too dark. To make it brighter, we have to decrease the value of shutter speed. But it still doesn't feel right. So we need to higher up the ISO value as well. Done! I hope we've made this much more clear for you, because he's getting tired. Now I will show you how to use this knowledge in 3ds Max. I will use Corona, but it works exactly the same in V-Ray. I prepared the scene. We have the foreground, the moving subject and the background. This is a daytime and the car is moving 60 km per hour. Now I will stop it so the car is in the middle of the frame. Select camera and switch to photographic exposure. I'll start rendering to show you how it works. As you can see, with the current value of the shutter speed, the car has a lot of motion blur. Let's say we want to freeze the car, so we have to increase the shutter speed value. As you've just learned, the image gets darker. To keep the same exposure, we can use the exposure calculator. We will apply our starting values and select what we want to calculate. Let's say we want to change aperture. 2.2 is the value we want to use. Let's say we don't want to have a shallow depth of field, so let's adjust the F number. Let's use 13. Now we have to calculate it again. We should use ISO 3200. You can ask me now, why don't we use automatic exposure? Usually we do and we don't worry about exposure calculations, but this knowledge is essential if you want to get your renders to the next level. Let's say we have a low light situation. We would have to change the ISO to 16000. In a normal camera it would result with a very nice image. So this is not a natural outcome. To get the best possible outcome, we have to keep this as close to reality as possible. In this case, let's lower the ISO to 2000, which would be fine in photography. And let's calculate the f-stop. Four point five is our value. In some cases, you don't even know what's wrong with the image but it looks fake for some reasons. And this can be one of these reasons. Also, with this knowledge you can quickly decide which options to change to get the desirable results. I hope it's clear for you. Now is your move. Create a simple scene and play around with these options. 
You can find the link to the exposure calculator in the description. If you have a camera which shoots in a manual mode, use it every day until you know how to exactly set your values to get results you want. Ok, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.